How advice fund? Other than your mention just a moment ago, banana population, banana uh, plantations, etc. You basically I'm not sure they have bananas. <laughs> you basically uh, were filled with what bananas? You basically spoke about Melbourne and Sydney. What about the Jewish communities in other places? Such as Perth, Brisbane, etc. Are they integrated with the overall community, okay. or are they more isolated? Sydney itself is a number of different planets and environments. You can be a suburban tourist and see very different parts of a multicultural city, which is different ethnic groups, different historic time periods, different pace even within the street within a city like Sydney. Sydney and Melbourne are quite distinct Jewish communities, and they're the larger communities, and they've organised different ways. I, uh, Melbourne, is, uh, by reputation, is far more Polish, Sydney more Hungarian, although there are lots of... Uh, Ephraim's laughing because he's probably experienced that. Uh, but they're, they're, uh, it's, it's not 100% true, but they, they developed in different ways at different times, and they're, they're sustaining communities that can be spoken of in a particular way. And they've been the most significant communities, not only because they're the largest Jewish communities, but because they're in the largest cities because the elite in Australia, economically, educationally, etc., generally are going to be based in Sydney or Melbourne. Canberra is a, a different situation. Canberra is a three-hour drive from Sydney. Uh, it's uh, the capital city where they roll up the streets on the weekend. Careful. You know, people come to work Careful in Canberra. What you say. People come to work in Canberra, I know, but you know, Cam Canberra's a nice place, but it, it doesn't have the city feel of a city or a Melbourne, and certainly the Jewish community, as wonderful as it's always has been, is very small. Uh, defined the city as seven suburbs looking for a city. Seven suburbs looking for a city? I didn't know there were seven suburbs. Okay. Now, again, Canberra is a subject like Hubbard. I get in trouble whenever I even mention it. So, so let's avoid Canberra, which is what I would do except for work requirements. Uh, and, and move on. Uh, Perth actually is a very interesting Jewish community. It's between, depending on who you ask, between four and a half and eleven thousand people. So, which is a big difference, but probably about six, six and a half, seven thousand is a reasonable number of people affiliated somehow with the community. They have different institutions. They have a day school. They have a kosher community. They have a number of synagogues. They were it was stagnating until. Uh, South African immigration, which made it more attractive not only to South Af Africans, but also New Zealanders, English, Americans have come because there's a larger community than there was because of the South African import. But it is the sort of place where somebody once said it's the only place where you find pork at your synagogue because they have a, a core pork outside the, uh, outside the synagogue. <laughs> you know, I mean, in, in, Perth, in Perth, the accent of the community is very South African, I'm told. Uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's also not insignificant because... Uh, there is produced some important figures in the Australian Jewish community. Probably the most important historically is he might disagree, but in my in my time certainly it's been Joe Berenson, who was a former federal minister and also a state attorney general, and is the mentor politically of the current foreign affairs minister. And but he's also an important figure within the Jewish community. And there have been good others with a very good Jew. A very good Jew, and he's been the outstanding person from Perth. And I could say something nice, his son in law, who's a Lubavitch rabbi. Uh, it was also my lawyer when David Irving sued me and was a good lawyer as well. So uh, <laughs> let's move on to so saying nice things about Perth and the uh, Buffett, which was easier than the camera. Uh, then we, uh, Adelaide. Uh, Adelaide, how would you describe Adelaide? I don't, I, I think churches. Uh, Adelaide is known as a city of churches, but it's also like you can look at some American country towns where they say, if you're not born there, they never forgive you until you die there. You know, it's a very uh, insular sort of. <coughs> sort of they have a different sort of identity. Uh, Adelaide is probably the most economically uh, depressed of the major capital cities because it was major manufacturing and the manufacturing moved to Asia and it's the Jewish community stagnated as the city has stagnated. At one stage it had a relatively vibrant community because a number of Egyptian immigrants arrived there and they built a community but when they were more successful they moved on. And people, when they make it big in Adelaide, they move to Melbourne more often, but sometimes it's in Melbourne. They don't really remain building the community. The main synagogue, central synagogue in the middle of the city, was sold some years ago and was replaced by a nightclub, which was, uh, for a short period, known as the Synagogue Sadomasochism Nightclub, uh, until the Jewish community complained and changed its name to uh, the Sin, S-Y-N. Uh, it's still there if anybody feels like a visit. I've only caught outside it. But uh, they, they, have a, they do have a, you know, they have reform and orthodox synagogues, a bit of a community, but it's really, really struggling as a community, Adelaide, mainly because of size. 
Queensland, where we find Brisbane, is interesting because the only state in a territory where the majority of the people don't live in the capital city is Queensland. The community, not just the Jewish community. So the Jewish community in Brisbane, which is the capital, expanded to include the Jewish community of another city, the Gold Coast, which has now almost continuous with suburbs, but is a good hour and a half drive probably from the end of one to the middle of the other. And they've got a bit of a, a community there. The Gold Coast is mainly a place, a, a very, very small scale Florida. So people retire there because it's a nice place to live. It's, but it is developing a little bit of an economy. And again, mainly people from Melbourne have chosen to move up to the Gold Coast. And there are other places, but again, they have a, a nice, you meet the people there, they're nice and pleasant, but it's, it's a provincial city in, a, in the way you see cities, and the Jewish community also is in that way, although again, they have produced some uh, very important uh, people within the broader Australian Jewish community and the Australian community as a whole. But again, if you want kosher food in Brisbane, you have to order it, the synagogue puts it in their freezer and you go and pick it up, sort of, it's that sort of Jewish life as against a Perth, for example, which doesn't have much larger community than Brisbane. The uh, thing is also Brisbane is very spread out. In Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, there are clusters of the Jewish community. In Brisbane, they're everywhere, which also is not conducive to a, a very positive ongoing community. There are also synagogues in Tasmania, uh, Lord Siston and Hobart. Hobart. Hobart was a classic because uh, but neither Orthodox or Reform for some time could really get a minion without helping each other, but they were at war most of the time about who was the legitimate leadership of the community. Uh, Lord says, and they were happy if you said you were Jewish and you could come to shore, even if you weren't, you could help make a minion, you know, because they had a different attitude to trying to keep a synagogue going. But they're, they're, they're tiny places. The best thing I can tell you about Lord says, and Hobart synagogues, though, uh, if there are any rabbis present, they were built during convict times. And Australian law was convicts had to attend religious services in their own religion. So they developed a, cha a place where your ball and chain, your chain, you take off the ball and it would be attached to a side of the pew. It's still there. So you were literally a captive congregation. <laughs> and I've heard other synagogues say this would be a very good method, but it's a hangover from convict times in Australia. <laughs> they still have it there. But that, that's basically, the reason I mentioned Sydney, Melbourne mainly, is that's where the overwhelming amount of action takes place. Also, I was born in Melbourne, and I argue the best decision I ever made in my life was to leave at the age of 18 months. And I, but I've lived in Sydney most of my life. <laughs> On this uh, happy note, uh, <laughs> Sydney. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, uh, Jeremy, for this overview and entertaining overview. We hope to get you back in a lot of long time, and was, I'm very glad that finally you made it to the GTP. Thanks a lot. We hope to see you all on the 27th. This is Professor Ira Sheskin, and here you have the uh, essay of Jeremy on your story.